Hey, welcome back everyone to your SQL Server tutorial series. This video we are going to be dis- Oh, my throat like- <laughs> Welcome back everyone to your- Oh, uh, it's not horrible. Welcome back everyone to your SQL Server tutorial series. The oh gosh, really? Ah! Claire! Welcome back everyone to your SQL Server tutorial series. This video we are going to be discussing one to many relationships. The last video we discussed one-to-one -one relationships, and we briefly mentioned one-to-many relationships. The example I gave in that video was a blog posting website. So we're creating a website where people can write blogs about themselves and their lives or whatever. And we made it to where a user can write as many blogs as they want, but that blog is exclusively owned by that one user. So this chicken wrote a couple blogs, and in this situation, the blog is exclusive to this chicken. <laughs> this is the perfect example of a one-to-many relationship. The reason this is a one-to-many relationship is because if you take one of these, let's say users, and then you compare that to these. So you would say, one user can have many blogs. But then, you take one of these and compare it to this. So you say, one blog can be owned by only one user. This is the easiest way to figure out what kind of relationship we have. See, we have one user can have multiple blogs, but one blog can only have one user. If this said multiple users, then it would be a many-to-many -many relationship. That's what we're gonna talk about in the next video. But for now, let's focus on one-to-many and learn how to design this in a database. Before we dive into the actual way to design this, Let's go through some incorrect ways to design this that are common amongst improperly designed databases. This is the first incorrect way to design a one-to-many relationship. As you can see, we have the blogs as an attribute of the users. So you can think users as the entity, and then we have blogs as the attribute. And then you would just store the content of the blog inside of this column. So Caleb Curry posted a blog about me and then I told my life story. Why is this a bad thing? For one, it doesn't give a separation of the attributes for the blogs. For example, this is the blog title. So we might think, oh, let's separate that out a little bit. Let's say blog title. And we'll make a new column, blog content. And then you could say whatever you wanted. And you can just store it as a string. This is also bad though, because now we are actually storing this as a one-to-one -one relationship. That's because we can only have one blog in here. So how do we add a blog if we did it this way? Well, we could say, hmm, let's just throw a comma in here and put the next blog name. So now I have two blogs, my life, and then we'll just put a comma or a, something to separate the contents, and then we'll write the next blog. Well, that is also just really bad because these values are no longer atomic. They're not their smallest indivisible pieces. If you had it this way and you did something like select everything from users, the blog title would be returned as just a comma separated list. So you'd have, and this is just awful. Now we don't know if this is one blog with a comma or if it's two blogs. It's just really bad design. So a way around this, hmm, let's add even more columns. So we could say blog title two and store that. And then you could have a blog content two. But that's also really bad because now we're limited to two blogs. And plus, if someone only has one blog, that means all of this blog two stuff is going to be null. Wasted space is stupid. Don't do that. Now let's go on to the third bad way to do this. And that would be to actually add a row. So we would say Caleb Curry, and we would put the second blog in here. And in this situation, it's really not that bad because we only have one username column. But if we had some other attributes of the user in here, for example, we could have their phone. Well, now we have their phone number in here twice. This is just really, really bad because now we have redundant data. Bad, you just don't wanna do that. So the three ways you don't store this is comma separating your values, adding extra columns, or adding rows with redundant data. Three bad things you don't wanna do. <laughs> now let's talk about the correct way to do this. Let's go back to just one blog. I accidentally erased it. And what we need to do is we need to take this blog 
and separate it out to its own table and name it blocks. Now in this situation, we would have a reference to the user, which in this case we could have a foreign key to the username, or we could use an ID if you wanted. And then we would have a column for the title and a column for the content. And that would work just fine. And now if you needed to add another blog, you would just add a row. So we have the first row, Caleb Curry, and then the about me in the title, and then the blog content right here. And then when you need another one, you just add a row, another reference to Caleb Curry, another title, another blog content. <laughs> As you can see, my drawing is awful. But in this situation, we don't have another column here that says phone, so we don't have redundant data. So let me just erase this and kind of make a cleaner version of this. Could have a users table, and one row could be like seven. Then we'd have the blogs table, have a blog ID, title, and content. And then each blog gets an entry inside of this table and is associated back to one user. So we could have user ID of seven, blog ID of one. That would be one blog. Then if we had another one, it'd be seven, two. That would be another blog. And you can see we don't have any redundant data. That's because the blogs table has the bare minimum required to describe a blog. If we stored the blogs in here and we added rows, we would have the username repeating, we would have the email repeating, and that's just not good at all. And one of the important things to remember here is that in a one-to-many relationship, you're going to need a foreign key. So in this situation, we have the user ID. This is a foreign key up to the user ID primary key and the users table. You could just as easily make this username and reference the username it doesn't really matter as long as there is a way to associate it with one user. So that's that guys, that's a one to many relationship. It's a little messy, I know. This is designed more for conceptual understanding and once we start building databases, we will actually, you know, program this crap. So hopefully by then, this will be a little bit more clear and that's all guys, so please be sure to subscribe, click like and I will see you in the next video.